Hello, my name is Jeremy O'Neill. I'm a paramedic with North Star Ambulance in beautiful Rangeley, Maine. And today we'd like to talk about some strategies and skills for improving our response to cardiac arrest patients. What you see here on the table are some of the equipment that should look familiar in your rescue kits, starting with, most importantly, our personal protective equipment, the rubber gloves, nasal and oropharyngeal airways, some uh, bacteriostatic uh, water-based lubricant, uh, an advanced airway today we're going to talk about is the King airway that we use. And additionally, some of the advantages of the King airway, this is a Salem sump or an NG tube or OG tube. And this here is a French catheter. Suction tubing, suction canister. This is end tidal CO2 monitoring equipment and our tube securing device. And of course, you will all recognize the bag valve mask. One of the most significant complications to BLS airway procedures is gastric distension. This is increased air pressure in the stomach due to aggressive ventilatory pressures during BLS uh, cardiac arrest procedures. Increased gastric distension will lead to regurgitation, which is the ejection of stomach contents in air from the stomach into the posterior oropharynx, which can lead to aspiration of the stomach contents. This would lead to aspiration pneumonia uh, and adult respiratory distress syndrome, which has a 65% mortality rate uh, in 2010 and has several complications, including congestive heart failure, respiratory failure, kidney failure, uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation, and other complications that uh, are difficult for a patient to survive. This is the King LTSD blind insertion airway device, approved for use in the state of Maine. And we're going to demonstrate and simulate its application on this patient here, which is my suction can full of water. Uh, as with all uh, airway devices, in preparation, preparation for insertion into a patient, it is good to unwrap your equipment to evaluate its capacity and integrity. Here we're inserting air into the cuffs. You will notice in detail there is the main oropharyngeal cuff the main air ports that are in, in the close proximity to the trachea. You'll notice there are several ports that help uh, with occlusions. Uh, a distal cuff that rests in the esophagus, esophagus and their distal port that allows for decompression of gastric distension through this tube here. Most noted and one of the best features of this device is right here. This lumen travels all the way down to the distal end, which will lead then into the stomach to allow for decompression of gastric distension. All right, we've checked our equipment. We're gonna use some uh, bacteriostatic uh, water-soluble lubricant to help us place the device in our patient. We're then going to decompress the tube. This is a number four king. There's a lot of controversy right now as to how much inflation pressure to use and that if you use too much, you're providing more complication to your patient. Now, we're gonna focus down here on our patient. This is a very large opening. Most mouths are not this way, but you will reach in, lift up on the patient's tongue, insert the King Airway in the corner of the mouth, much like an OPA, seated down to the level of the teeth, and then rotated to in line of the chin. Once you are in place, you're going to inflate to the approved amount of air. And in this number four, we're at 60 to 80. I'm going to inflate to full 80 so that you have the effect of seeing its value. Notice how I haven't let go of the tube once I've inserted it. Now we're in place. We take the cap off the BVM. An essential part, and this is now we're at step five, while bagging, we're going to withdraw on the tube so that when auscultating the chest, we hear the best possible lung sounds from the patient. It seems a little incongruous to have bubbles blowing at this time. However, when you've drawn back, you will note at the markings of the King Airway, and there's three levels here, at what level you're at, where it's 14 centimeters now. And we will then secure the tube Mind you, chest compressions will be occurring all the time while this is going on. We'll simulate the securing of our tube using a commercially approved device. 
And we will also include end tidal CO2 monitoring, which is the standard of care in the state of Maine. This is our end tidal device, which hooks up to our EKG monitor and provides us with an end tidal rating. It also guides and directs therapy. We will then proceed with a very small volume of air. You notice how I squeeze and I'm accelerating the rate. It should be one ventilation with this device, one ventilation every six to eight seconds. And when we say ventilation, it is this, part of the skill. There it is, one second insertion, and again. Very small tidal volumes. In 2010, the American Heart Association has recommended 500 to 600 milliliters of air. This is a 1500 milliliter bag, so we really don't need to aggressively ventilate or overventilate this patient. If we were to do that, I would like to point out that it, I believe it is possible for you to provide aggressive ventilations so much that you would continue to ventilate beyond the distal cuff and provide continued gastric distension. So we've uh, used the blind airway insertion, uh, blind insertion airway device. We're ventilating our patient independently of chest compressions at this point, but now we need to manage what has been going on during BLS airway procedures that has caused our gastric distension. I have two versions of suction. This is the French suction catheter, which is an 18 gauge, which can be utilized to decompress a stomach but more appropriately would be the uh, NG tube or the OG tube, which is approved for use in the state of Maine, especially when uh, having applied an advanced airway. I would like to point out some of the differences in the two tubes. Again, this is the French suction catheter tip. You'll notice that it's open on the end and has two uh, extra occluded parts, and that the NG tube is uh, blocked on the end and has many different uh, lateral ports with which to suction through, okay? The French suction catheter also requires to occlude this to provide suction at the end of the tip. If you do not occlude, you do not have any suction. The NG tube does not require that. At the end here, if this piece is lost, you will have a much more difficult time in suctioning. It attaches to our suction hose like that, okay? And now, as with all things medical, we're gonna put some of our bacteriostatic solution, also known as Kentucky jelly, around the distal edge of the tube. We're gonna find that distal port after having appropriately measured the NG tube, which you can think of it as an NPA, that then goes from the earlobe to the xiphoid process in the chest. Most patients will be somewhere between 45 and 55 to reach the stomach. Once we've encountered the stomach, we can then apply suction through this device here, and we will notice an evacuation of stomach contents and air. This should also improve any resistance that was felt during BLS airway procedures. When people talk about having poor compliance and unable to ventilate, and I will demonstrate here on this bag, I'm occluding the end of the BVM, and you notice how it's having a very difficult time to squeeze. People talk about that being poor compliance. Well, people, I would encourage people to envision that a stomach full of air and food would provide this level of difficulty in ventilating lungs. So now that we've attached our suction device, we've evacuated the stomach, we're going to have an increased compliance, and I'm again demonstrate a very slow volume of air. We're monitoring our end tidal for appropriate physiological conditions for the return of spontaneous circulation. And you'll notice that I did not remove the suction catheter. Continuous suction is not approved these days, and they talk about uh, while our machines can get to 300 millimeters of mercury, 80 millimeters of mercury is sufficient to evacuate a stomach and reduce gastric distension. I would also like at this time to demonstrate what over-aggressive ventilation may do for your patient. I'm moving my equipment. If I was to compress this bag entirely, please notice what happens to our patient's lungs. And think of all that air and excessive pressures that are developing in the stomach. You'll notice that it creates quite a mess. Well, I would encourage you to envision that mess coming up past the distal tube of the cuff of the king, entering the oropharynx space, 
and causing us to create that aspiration pneumonia condition. You'll see that we're using our very low pressure bag squeezings for ventilations over one to two seconds, allowing appropriate exhalation time. Mind you, my rate is accelerated compared to what would be happening during a, very, uh, a cardiac arrest event. But also want to include that just because your blind insertion airway device, our King Airway, is inserted, doesn't mean that aggressive ventilations won't cause additional gastric distension and possible aspiration. If the patient manages to vomit around the distal cuff of the King Airway and it goes unrecognized, you'll be ventilating the patient with uh, stomach contents causing an aspiration. If at any time that vomitus were to touch this device here, you can see an occluded end tidal CO2 sensor. This has rendered this device inoperable. So protect your end tidal CO2 by removing it in the event of vomitus and do what you can for suctioning. You'll see on the internet this is our French catheter suction device again. It can be inserted much like the same distance. Again, we're using our bacteriostatic water-based lubricant. It can be asserted and measured just like an NPA from the lower lobe of the ear to the nasal cavity and inserted that distance to the tube, which is right at the ventilation port. And again, attached to your suction device. Occluded, withdrawn for no more than 10 seconds because this is the direct port to the lungs. Once that has returned or been restored, you can then return to your ventilations. Low pressure, five to 600 milliliters of air. This concludes our demonstration. I want to thank you for your time and attention and Good luck improving your patient outcomes in cardiac arrest.